I've just made a big update to my part 107 practice test and full remote pilot test prep course that I think you might be interested in. That's adding 20 questions to the already 300 question test bank. Now we've got 320 total questions in there. And these new ones that I've added are based on feedback from students who have taken the part 107 test and come back and said, hey, the FAA is asking a lot about fixed wing airplane operations or operating on an airport, for example. So a lot of the new questions that I've added have to do with these topics that these students have come back with. And what I wanted to do here is go over with you five of what I think are the most difficult questions out of the batch of new questions that I've added. If you want to check out that practice test or the full test prep course, You'll find the links to both of those in the video description, and you can get 20% off of both of those products with the code TUBE20. So let's get into the first question, which has to do with the difference between civil, public, and military aircraft. This question asks, the U.S. Air Force is operating an atmospheric research SUAS over the Texas oil fields. Must this comply with Part 107? Yes, no, or only if the SUAS is carrying property for hire. The thing to know about this question is that Part 107, in the very first paragraph of Part 107, says that Part 107 only applies to civil unmanned aircraft operating in the United States. Well, civil aircraft is an actual defined term in the FAA regulations in Part 1. A civil aircraft is an aircraft other than a public aircraft. We go further down the list and find public aircraft, and to sum this up, a public aircraft is one owned by any level of government in the U.S. for non-commercial purposes, whether that's a federal government, state, or local government, or a military aircraft. So with the information provided in this question, it's a U.S. Air Force unmanned aircraft, so it's a military aircraft doing a governmental function research. So that makes it a public aircraft, being one that is operated by the military. Part 107 only applies to civil aircraft, not public aircraft. And so the correct answer to this question is no. The next question has to do with operating from a moving vehicle. A travel blogger is following her truck with an SUAS while driving through a remote desert, recording the journey for a monetized YouTube video. The driver of the truck is solely responsible for operating the truck, while the passenger is serving as SUAS PIC. Does this comply with Part 107? Yes, no, or it depends on state driving laws. In case you've missed it, the FAA is cracking down on monetized YouTube videos where there's aerial footage captured by a drone where they don't have a Part 107 license. That's a discussion for another day, and it doesn't have to do with this question. But what this has to do with is operations from a moving vehicle. And there is so much that you can read into for this question. Don't do it. You might be asking yourself, well, what kind of airspace are they in? Do they need authorization? Can the PIC even see the drone if they're flying it from the truck? How many drones are they flying? Stop asking those kinds of questions because it gets a lot of people in trouble. Just go to the basic wording of the question and apply that to a specific part of the regulations. Part 107.25 says that a person can operate an SUAS from a moving vehicle if it's over a sparsely populated area and not carrying property for hire. With the information that we're given in this question, that they are operating from a moving vehicle over a remote desert, and that's all it says, we apply that to that regulation, the correct answer is yes, it does comply with Part 107. Don't read into it. Don't go all down all the rabbit holes. Don't ask all the what ifs. Just look at the wording and go to the regulation. This next question has to do with operations over people, the four categories. The FAA is asking more and more questions about this topic. 
to be eligible for Category 2 Operations Over People. The SUAS cannot contain any exposed rotating parts that could lacerate human skin and cannot transfer 11 or more foot-pounds of kinetic energy to a person being hit, must have an airworthiness certificate, or must weigh 0.55 pounds or less. Now you might be saying to yourself, how am I supposed to remember how many foot-pounds of kinetic energy all of these different categories have? Well, you don't need to do that, because this question tests your process of elimination skills. And that's one of my top five tips for taking an FAA test that you can find in another video that I did. And that's to use the process of elimination if you're not quite sure about something. And that's really easy to do here. The second option, option B, says an airworthiness certificate. Well, an airworthiness certificate only applies to category four. So we scratch that out. And then option C, the weight limit of 0.55 pounds, that only applies to Category 1 operations. So we can scratch that out, and that gives us A as the only remaining answer, and that is the correct answer. This next question has to do with operating on an airport, and there have been some questions about operating on an airport, asking you specifically about airport markings and signage. Now, operating on an airport is something that you're probably never, ever going to do. But if you do, the consequences for making a mistake are very high. And so the FAA is testing your knowledge about this. While conducting an aerial survey of a local Class D airport, the control tower calls you and instructs you to remain clear of all runways. How will you identify when you're clear? A, you're following the solid yellow taxi stripe. B, you are on the side of the hold short markings that have two dashed yellow lines, or C, you are on the side of the hold short markings that have two solid yellow lines. The markings they're talking about here are asking about the hold short markings. You have to be on one side of these markings to be considered clear of the runway protected area, but which side? There's a really easy mnemonic to remember this. Dashed is dangerous. Solid is safe. You have to be on the solid side of these markings in order to be considered clear of the runway, to be safe. If you're on the dashed side, that's dangerous. So the correct answer here is C. This final question has to do with both density altitude and fixed wing aircraft. And those two things combined can really confuse a lot of people. You're planning to fly your fixed wing unmanned aircraft on a tall mountain plateau on a hot summer day. What is an important consideration to keep in mind? A. Propeller efficiency will decrease, but the wings will generate more lift. B. Propeller efficiency increases and wings generate more lift. Or C. Propeller efficiency decreases and wings will generate less lift. We are seeing a lot more questions on the test that have to do with fixed wing aircraft. But don't worry about that. Most of us were used to flying quadcopters because they're so prevalent. But as long as we understand the basic principles behind flight, aerodynamics, and performance, it's really all the same. So there's four conditions uh, regarding performance that you have to be aware of that are considered dangerous conditions. Those are the four H's, high, hot, humid, and heavy. When you're at a high altitude, or in hot air, or in humid air, or you're operating a heavy aircraft near its max gross weight, all of those things are going to decrease the aircraft performance and its accumulative effect also. So this question says you're at a high altitude on a hot day. Those are going to mean that the airfoil is going to be less efficient. It's not going to be able to generate as much lift. Both the propeller and the wings are considered airfoils. So they are both affected by the decrease in density due to the high altitude and the hot air. You're at a high density altitude. Now this can also get confusing, high density altitude. It's not high density 
altitude. It's high density altitude. You see the difference there. High density would mean there's a lot more air molecules, which means that it's going to generate more lift. High altitude means that there's less air density to generate less lift. Density altitude is just a type of altitude. So when you hear high density altitude, that is a high density altitude, not high density air. Okay, so there's less air molecules and both the propeller and the wings are gonna be less efficient. The propellers are gonna be less efficient and the wings are gonna generate less lift. So option C is the correct answer here. And those are the, what I think are the five most difficult questions out of the new 20 that I've added to this test bank that now has about 320 questions. You can see all of them in the part 107 practice test and in the full remote pilot test prep course. Free previews are available for that if you wanna check it out first. Again, you'll find links to both of those in the description. You can get 20% off both of those products as a viewer using the code tube20. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions about these topics. Happy flying, and we'll see you in the next video.